Welcome back, Kitty. Uh, Thank la you. Last time we we uh, did part one and, and we kind of caught people up with where you are on your cancer journey. And we talked about what your journey looks like going forward and what's giving you peace and joy. We talked about raw emotions and uh, we're going to talk about a few other things, but this has been quite a journey. And I just thank you for your willingness to to, uh, meet with me and tell your story. And as one cancer survivor to another, um, um, there's so many things that we have learned in this journey. And I, I like to say, um, I wouldn't have wished for cancer. I wouldn't have chosen cancer, but I am thankful for the things I've learned that only cancer could teach me. Mm -hmm. And I think God has used cancer in my life and is using it. And I think you would say the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's tell everybody a little bit though, um, uh, what's your diagnosis? I have acute myeloid leukemia, AML. That's that's right. And you'd mentioned that it was leukemia and you're on a treatment regimen that's every 28 days. And uh, you had said that uh, you're learning to, to mitigate the side effects of that regimen. How's that going for you this week, this month? Well, this cycle of treatment I finished on Saturday. And so I'm looking forward to a couple of weeks of... Uh, um, being able to be off from medications. But you know, the cycle of treatment, um, I'm so grateful because the with the research, instead of having to go in for infusions, now I can take it in pill form at home. Mm, wow. And so my whole regiment is at home, you know, and if I could stay away from getting any bacteria or virus. So we have to watch whatever I eat and uh, am exposed to. So no plants, no pets, no, none of that. I can't be around because of the bacteria. Yeah. But um, anyhow, with being able to follow the cycle of uh, exhaustion, digestion problems, um, fatigue, uh, the exhaustion, um, just the various things that come up, the joint pains, the various um, brain fog. Jim really does well at keeping an eye on and I'll be fumbling for something and, or I, um, and he'll remind me, he says, well, that's what happens in this time of the cycle. And then with one of these medications, I break out in sores on my hands and my legs. Oh. And uh, so I get like a hard rash mm. and yep, that's part of this cycle and it'll clear up in a little bit. So he keeps reminding me of what's happening because my brain doesn't hold it anymore. And so yeah. it's been real helpful. You know, it's, it's nice to be able to do that at home. Um, I, there was a year where I had to inject myself three times a week with, with little injections of interferon. And um, at first it, it, it creeped me out sticking myself with a needle. And then I, then I learned that people with diabetes do that all the time. And I figured out what worked for me, but it was a rough year. Um, I the side imagine. effects. Yeah. Well, oh. Kit, Kitty, uh, continuing our talk from, from last time, um, you've been suffering a lot, but you've been suffering well. And, and how, are, how have you learned that? Well, you know, I think the building my capacity to be able to suffer well and learning from other models like my mother and seeing how. And so that's helped me see how to handle and navigate this kind of a journey. Yeah. And when I first got diagnosed, right away at, Thri at our Thrive trainings, we teach people about doing a three, three, and three at night. Mm -hmm. And I asked Jim, I says, I have got to do this every night with you. Can you please do it with me? Because I need this to be able to cope. So after we say our good night prayers, then we do three about God, mm -hmm. three appreciations about our day, and three appreciations about each other. Mm -hmm. That has helped me so much to be able to finish my day, not being able to be thinking about, oh, you know, all the bar terrible things that are happening with my cancer, but all the things that I'm grateful for and all the things that I have appreciation for and building connection with people I knew, you know, and keeping up with phone calls, staying up with friends that has um, people glad to be with me with their voice tone has been really helpful to me. Um, when it was nicer weather and I was out of the hospital, people coming and sitting on my deck because we couldn't have them in the house because of COVID restrictions, yeah. but plus with, for my um, having to you know, keep from being exposed to anything of bacteria. 
and wearing masks and sitting outside and chatting with people. Now it's too cold. So I'm <laughs> eager for spring and warm up. Yeah. But just building on the smaller situations that I've had earlier in life has helped prepare me for being able to handle the bigger thing now of this yeah. leukemia. That's so beautiful. That's helped. Yeah, I think your whole lifetime's prepared you for this battle, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. And and yet you picked up some um, some skills, some relational brain skills along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got a community around you. Uh, you you you've got uh, Emmanuel presence and and uh, practices that you've practiced, and all of those things have enabled you to endure suffering well. Mm -hmm. um, so where have you experienced uh, God's presence? Where we in, here in Life Model Works and the Life Model Tribe, we call it Emmanuel because that means God with us. And, and where have you experienced Emmanuel in your cancer story? Well, you know, my family um, on my mother's side particularly has the Lynch syndrome, which is a propensity to have many cancers. And so this is my fourth cancer, wow. but it's probably the biggest and most um, uh, emotional for me. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to sense God's presence along the way as I've previously researched uh, cancer as I've had this journey and being prepared for now when it was like, okay, we wanna put in a port. No, I don't want that. I wanna, you know, I, know what, I wanna know what my al alternatives are, what my options are. Whereas before, I, if I hadn't studied, you know, and God guided me in being able to pay attention to these things, then I think I would have just followed the, the path yeah. that was put out for everybody. But I think God's been guiding me along the way, and I've sensed his presence as he's, you know, look this way, you know, ask mm -hmm. these questions, pay attention to this, and just being able to feel his presence when I'm waiting for lab results to see what my readings are, what, you know, where I am in my immune system, how neutropenic I am, how mm. I have to be so guarded. And mm. uh, just all those little steps along the way have just brought such a sense of peace mm -hmm. and knowing that God's walking with me and guiding my steps in yeah. what I ask and what I do. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. And I can't help but think that you shared last time about one time you were having a treatment and it was painful. And uh, you asked the, the, the tech, can I tell you some stories? Because I, I need to be distracted. And I can't help but think that that was the Lord prompting you to do that. Yeah, they had me laying on a, on a, a gurney, you know, kind of a gurney thing facing a blank wall. Ah. And just staring at the paint on the wall. It's like, okay, I've <laughs> this is, I need something more. I know God, you're here with me. You're right here facing me, but can I talk? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Um, so, um, and you said you made it your goal to show appreciation to the people who were serving you. And uh, you may not have said it that way. And, and Kitty, that's not normal. That's that's not normal for humanity to to do that. What what got you to that point where you were you were acting that way? Um, well, besides my mother's example, but just knowing how I like to be appreciated, mm -hmm. and you know, as I would appreciate the nurses and all the little things they do, you know, it's like, well, this is our job, or this is you know, this is what we do, or whatever, and it's like but it makes such an impact on me and how you're so yeah. caring with me. Yeah. And so it, you know, my effect was that I got better treatment. <laughs> That's true. You know, that they true. were kind to me uh -huh. and um, they would, they would tell me I was their favorite patient and they'd say, <laughs> I wish you needed us more. Cause I want to come in next time. You know, I come in, have another story for me. <laughs> and, uh, they loved hearing about my wilder chats and then they on their yeah. breaks they'd go and watch a wilder chat uh -huh. and one of the gals came in and uh, had watched one of mine of uh, gratitude and appreciation yeah and she listened and heard that my highest appreciation thing is breezes mm. and so you know on the board on the wall that they have in your hospital room with the doctor and the na names yeah. and all that kind of stuff she put breezes really big <laughs> so that i'd remember it and it'd be right in front of me it was there the whole month of my hospital Beautiful. stay. You know, one of the things that doctors doctors told me in my cancer journey was that my positive attitude 
would make a huge difference in my body's ability to fight cancer because it strengthens the immune system. Mm -hmm. And that's just a fact. And, yeah. and, and uh, many philosophers and survivors of horrible things have said all along the years, uh, the one thing we can control is our attitude. We can't yeah. control anything else really, right. but we can control that. And, and right. you had a lifetime of Emmanuel practices. You had a lifetime of brain skills. Uh, you had a model of your mother. You had your community around you. And really, it's a beautiful story, even though it's a very painful story. When I said a minute ago, it's not normal to act that way. Sadly, it's not normal. That's unfortunately the way of our world. Uh, and uh, But there's a better way, isn't there? Yeah, and I've seen the effects of some of those other ways where nurses just don't want to come in and care for yeah. you, you know, yeah. and um, I remember one story of, of one fellow that was in there, and he wasn't very relational, and he was just mm -hmm. handing out tracks, you know, those Bible tracks, yeah. Yeah. trying to convert them, and they didn't, the nurses and staff didn't like that, yeah. and so they would leave him alone, and they wouldn't care for him, and it was like, well, he needs care too, but he didn't know how to be relational. Yeah. And I think being relational with the nursing staff, the anybody that you encounter is just makes a world of difference. It does. Well, let's uh, shift gears a little bit. Uh, you've okay. got a, you've got a community around you and that made a big difference. Oh, so, yes. so, so, uh, the, and, and I, we had a community around us and, and it was always well-meaning, but sometimes it didn't help. A lot of times it did help, but it was kind of, it was kind of a mixed blessing, a net positive, mostly a blessing, but occasionally there were exceptions to that rule. So talk about that. Well, our small group that uh, we call our Hesed group mm -hmm. was such a blessing to me because every morning they would want to hear how my night had gone. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it was, you know, they woke me up so many times to do, you know, tests or to uh, take your vitals yeah. and stuff like that and one night you know in particular when the nurse raised my bed that got stuck and she couldn't lower me and so it ended up in kind of a funny thing you know so anyhow telling my group about it you know the next morning about my being left up high you know and then having to get another nurse in there to try and figure out why my bed went lower because I would have to get out to go to the bathroom and stuff and so different comments were like, well, that would have made me really mad, you know, and we were, I was saying, well, we were laughing about it because now they'd have to maybe get a slide for me to be able to slide me just right down or something. Anyhow, just all the little things that would happen. And uh, they were such an encouragement to me because they always wanted to hear how my nights went in my days. And so I was always sending out messages. And then one of the gals, um, Lori would do the juicing and bring mm -hmm. me the juice all the time. So kept yeah. me in juice all the time. When I went into the hospital and I was so teary eyed and so upset that Jim couldn't be with me, I was crying so much. And the tissues in the hospital are those little tiny things and so <laughs> raw. Yeah. And I said, oh, I need some tissues. Could you, so they brought me and cause they couldn't come to my room. So they drop them off at the front of the Yes, check-in desk, and then they'd get them up to my room. So they got me some nice tissues that I, <laughs> I could use. I needed a longer phone cord for my phone, you know. So one of my sons went and got me a phone cord. Uh, one of my sons was writing me stories about how his and my relationship was impacted. Those were so sweet. Mm, um, wow. Bought me a tablet to be able to, you know, watch things on because my second time in the hospital, the TVs were not working. Oh no. And sometimes that's a helpful distraction. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Be able to just keep up on life. So having him buy me a tablet to be able to keep up on life. There was just, and then when we got out of the hospital, um, taking turns, we had some that would, um, our sons mostly did our grocery shopping for all the greens and things that I mm -hmm. needed for my juicing when I got home so I could do it on my own. But we had friends that would go to Trader Joe's and take my list. You know, I just emailed them what my list would be. And yeah. then they'd ring and drop it off at the house. We had wow. friends that did our Costco shopping for us. Ones that did things at Walmart that I needed. Uh -huh. um, just, you know, all those little things were so helpful to just drop off at the house what we needed. And, wow. uh, and then they'd come and um, sit out and on the deck and visit with me for a little bit as much as strength of that as I had. Yeah. And that was so encouraging to see another face, 
Yeah. Because I'm an extrovert and I like to be in mm -hmm. touch with people. And so the many phone calls I would get from people just to check and see how I was doing. Because I was used to being out and about all the time, meeting sure. people for coffee, going shopping, doing all these things. And now I was stuck at home. Yeah. And my husband's a, an introvert and a bit of a hermit. And so <laughs> you can only take so much of my telling my stories over and over again, you know, and as we do at Thrive, you need, girls need to talk to each other so mm -hmm. we can release that oxytocin. So he'd, you know, talk to your friends, you know. And so <laughs> he encouraged people to call me. What we need more than a meal is call Kitty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Wow. What a great story. Uh, uh, what an encouraging story. And it's interesting. It's There's a there's a symbiotic relationship between um, uh, relational brain skills, Emmanuel presence, and multi-generational community. And when you have, you're growing in each of the three areas, it just builds on itself and feeds on itself. And 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 occasionally you hear Emmanuel directly in your your times with him. Occasionally you, you hear it from uh, your brothers and sisters who share something with you that the Lord shared with them. And yeah. uh, you know you were you were uniquely positioned. To, to endure this suffering well. And that's just such a beautiful story. Now, I will say my cancer journey, occasionally people would say things that um, were not appropriate, that, that were um, not helpful. And sometimes they would say them to my wife. And that was hard to navigate. And back, th back then, I didn't have some of the brain skills that, that uh, some of the skills that I have now I'm developing now. How about you? Did you experience that? And if so, how did you navigate it? Well, you know, um, I did get some comments different times that um, were not helpful. And I would just write that off as they haven't been to Thrive yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. So, it's like, well, they, they don't know. And so yeah. I would just give them grace for that. And it's like, yeah, that wasn't helpful. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I won't... Um, probably enjoy another call from that person again <laughs> if that's the same way that they you know kind of listen to me or and respond to me because it just wasn't encouraging so yeah one time uh, a person who I, an acquaintance asked me in passing at church before a service how are you doing and when I started to answer how I was doing her eyes were kind of rolling and and pretty soon she disengaged from the conversation and some people asked that out of polite social convention, but they don't really want to know the answer. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, you got to be careful who you share your story with. And thankfully we had some other people who did want to know and would take the time to listen. Yeah, so. when I get asked how I'm doing, I'll say, I'm doing well right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like what I'm doing in the moment, because if I'm out and about meeting them, I'm doing well right now in the moment. Yeah. But I may yeah. not have been a bit ago. <laughs> Yeah, or, or, or later today, you never know. Yeah. Well, yeah. How, that if you could sum it up and, and maybe talk about how, how's God using your cancer journey in your life? Well, you know, I, I would never have asked for this journey. Mm -hmm. and, but yet it seems like in a way I've been having a sort of a ministry with doctors and nurses now yeah. with all the contacts I've had. And I wouldn't have guessed it. And um, when I was in the hospital, I have a dear friend that um, has an African, uh, African grill restaurant. And she had been trying to provide meals for doctors and nurses, but she hadn't been able to make the right connection. But when wow. I was in that hospital, then she um, asked me about it, if I could help her find mm -hmm. the right way to, and so I talked to my nurse and she talked to somebody else or whatever. So my friend that runs the African grill brought over 50 meals for doctors wow. and nurses one day. Wow. And that just delighted her. And oh, I, yeah. been, oh, yeah. I was telling the different nurses about, you need to go to her restaurant. You know, she's got a lovely restaurant. And so I, and then when she delivered those meals, she delivered a meal for me. Uh -huh. Also of what my favorite food is from Africa. And so that was very special. And so that helped bless her. Mm -hmm. um, I'm participating in some genetic studies with, mm. um, because of my Lynch syndrome and um, trying to figure out, because the, they didn't test the blood disease in the um, original genetic testing I had. So I'm going back for more testing to see how the blood cancers fit in with the Lynch syndrome. Yeah. So I'm hoping for 
um, you know, some good outcomes to be able to handle the two mutations that I have. Um, my activities like being able to teach at Thrive or traveling to YWAM or different places to travel and teach. Um, since I was limited here at home, then I've been crocheting. Oh. So I made um, 35 shrugs, shoulder shrugs yes. for my nurses. And uh, so that they could stay warm because they always complained about being so cold when they're sitting at their computers. Yeah. I made a baby blanket for my doctor when his wife had a baby. I've made prayer shawls for different ones that have been praying for mm. me. Um, I gave out books. Jim gave me some of the, his books when I was in the hospital that if I had encounters to be able to share the books with people. So I gave away different books when I was in the hospital to different it was like God was directing me. This is the person to give this book wow. to. Wow. And giving out um, some of his gym talks. Yeah. Um, and so just being able to spread those. And then I tell my sons of what I need and what I really would like. You know, I want visits. I want calls. I want drop buys, you know, drop and see us. Last night, one of our sons and his wife came up for a visit. Beautiful. Um, they have had COVID and so they've got the antibodies. <laughs> and so they had, we all had our masks on, but we got uh -huh. a nice visit. Nice. Um, they supplied juicing supplies for me. And so they've been doing the things that at this point, um, I just tell them what it is I really want and what I need. And so they've been meeting those and it's just been delightful. And I'm just really appreciating all the ways that, um, God has been using my cancer journey and uh, it's enriched my life. And, uh, but it's slowed me down in ways. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> so I'm appreciating more quiet moments. I'm appreciating being at home, not running around as much. I'm appreciating just the beauty of where we live here in Colorado and the seasons yeah. and just God's care and how he's strengthening me on this journey. And I'm looking forward to hugs someday. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll be able to get some hugs. When I'm on my um, cycle of treatment, Jim can't kiss me because my medications are too potent. Oh no. And, uh, so, I, and I can't touch them. So I have to move them from one bottle to another one to pop them down my mouth. Mm. And so that's how toxic they are. So Jim can't kiss me when I'm in treatment. So two days after I'm out of treatment and my body's gotten out of it, then I can get a kiss. But I can still get hugs from him, but I can't get hugs from other people. Yeah. And uh, so and I'm you, looking forward. You get, are a hugger. Yeah, I like them. And I want to get back to teaching at Thrive, being able to travel. And I do enjoy, I've got a little yellow smart car. I do drive, love driving that around and going and stopping in his stores. And I make friends with the store owners. Uh, there's a boutique near me here that uh, I've made friends with, with the gal that owns it. And she talks to me about her life and uh, I share what I can. She's not a believer, mm. but I make those opportunities and I love them to be able to make those connections with people. And yeah. so I'm looking forward to being able to do that again. Beautiful. And, and you're gonna be uh, doing some teaching next month for the first time since cancer. Since yes. this round of yes. cancer. Yes, yes. I'm looking forward to that. It'll be my um, first chance back now after this um, cancer journey on with leukemia. And so we'll see how I do. It's going to be on Zoom. Uh -huh. And so we'll see how that all works for me. But the students will all be in the same room. So it won't be like them all separated because I was checking to see how I could do some of the exercises if I, cause I don't know how to do the chat rooms and all that stuff. Sure. And uh, so this will be a new experience for me. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, uh, um, and they're all in Hawaii, the, the students, right? right? Yeah, yeah. It's a shame. You've been there many times. It's a shame you can't. I love the big island. Yes. Yeah, such a joy. I'd love to be there in person. Yeah. Well, that's something to look forward to in the years ahead. I, I, would I was think. there in person last February. Yeah. Before I got this diagnosis and had such a wonderful time. My sister came with me and mm -hmm. oh, it was just delightful. So I look forward to having that opportunity again.
That's uh, our favorite island um, uh -huh. of, of the Hawaiian islands. Yeah. Okay. At least so far, we've been to most of them. So, um, wow. Well, Kitty, this has been such a delight. You're such an encouragement. And I'm so thankful um, for your example and for, um, you know, just how you've uh, uh, walked with God all of these years and picked and learned how to return to joy, learned how to live from the heart that Jesus gave you. And uh, you're such a champion for the life model. And, um, you know, I just love uh, the three times so far this fall, we've been able to get together here down in Colorado Springs and then me coming up to the house a couple of times. And I'll be back. Uh, Jim and I are working on a project together. And and um, in fact, I'm on a call with Jim here in about an hour. Um, we've got a lot of neat things coming up with Life Model Works, trying to get this message to an even broader audience. And, yes. you know, the Lord is giving us favor. Our, the response to our year-end giving campaign was wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we're in a good position for this year. But it's because of you and people like you who have invested and so thank you for that. And uh, if, if it would be okay, I'd like to have a prayer for you. Would that be all right? Thank you. I'd appreciate that. Lord, we thank you that uh, we're gathered uh, by this technology, even though Kitty's uh, 90 miles away. I thank you, Lord, that you're, you're with her and you're with me. And you're with our people watching this video in the future, wherever they might be. And I pray you'd give us ears to hear uh, what you're saying. And I pray the Lord that we could return to joy from every unpleasant emotion, that we could live out of joy and gratitude. And Lord, I thank you that you don't waste hurts. That when we have hurts, when we have hardships, when we struggle, uh, you don't waste that. We can cooperate with you and become the people you've created us to be. And I just pray that you'd continue uh, pouring out your favor and healing in Kitty's life and using her in a mighty year, mighty way in the future. We look forward to our, our, our years together uh, serving you, uh, both in this life and the next. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank Kitty, you so much, Ray. I appreciate this, being Kitty, able to tell my story. Kitty, thank you. Thanks for being willing to be transparent with our group. Uh, just love it. So we'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks. God Blessings bless you. to you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.